let's dive right into Illustrator and the software. So this is our menu up at this very top section, and you need to make sure that you are logged into your Adobe Creative Cloud, this little kind of figure eight looking link. This is the icon for Adobe Creative Cloud. I am currently logged into mine. As you can see, it's my one with SCF. When you're on school campus, you've got free access. If you are working remote in any form or fashion, you need to purchase some sub some subscription. Um, currently, they're offering student rates for as inexpensive as 20 bucks a month, which is pretty cheap, especially considering none of my courses include a textbook that you have to purchase. So something to think about investing in, but make sure you are looking at your name and logged in through the menu, Creative Cloud. Got it? Okay. Then down in your dock in the bottom section of your computer, you're going to click on Adobe Illustrator. <clears throat> Once it loads, you'll get a screen kind of like this, and you can exit off of this little guy. We're going to go directly into New File, and we're going to set it up a very specific way. So I've already set up some templates for this next piece of lesson and they're quite large. You would typically work in, let's just pull them up, like a letter, although you want inches. This is giving us kind of template options. Don't use any of this stuff, by the way. You're creating artwork from scratch in here, not filling out templates that are already accessible to you. So you're typically gonna work in inches or pixels. Uh, everything digital now on your phones or computer is talked about in pixels. You'll start get used to see, you will get used to seeing like 10, 20 pixels being kind of a widescreen computer or TV, depending on the size, obviously you can get even bigger. Um, phones are much smaller, a few hundred pixels. So you'll kind of start to see pixels the way you will inches. We already sort of know inches, standard for a letter is eight and a half by 11. <clears throat> Bleed has to do with if there's a white border around your print. Every print prints with a white border. An additional step is to have a full trim where your ink looks like it ran to the edge of the page. In reality, it's an additional step in the printing process where they trim off that white and it costs more. So understanding a budget um, and where these things are gonna be printed and used and how they need to be in terms of a bleed is very important. Typically we do uh, 0.125 inch if we are setting up a bleed. It does not matter for these initial tutorials that we're doing. Um, advanced options, CMYK is for print, cyan, magenta, yellow, K stands for black. Um, RGB is typically for anything digital, red, green, blue. We used to be really, really cautious about which one of these we were setting up a file for because they do have a slightly different look. Greens will look just a little different for print versus uh, on a backlit computer screen, so things like that. Now that everything is digital and some things are printed, you know, almost everything you're printing, you're double dipping and utilizing in some form of digital portfolio or social media. So these lines are a little more blurred, I think, as time goes on and we get more into the digital world. So understanding that if we're going to print CMYK, so big posters, things like that, but understanding we could switch back and forth to RGB for digital is super important. So keep that in mind. We are going to leave these as CMYK, pretend like we're going to print them. Raster effects, these really should be pretty low. You shouldn't be using raster effects. Vector has to do with Illustrator. Raster has to do with Photoshop. Those raster effects boggle down Illustrator. They're not native to it. I know that's not intuitive um, with how this is set up, but that just is the way it is. It sh sometimes they call it Photoshop effects, and then that gives you a little bit more of a visual indicator that, oh, I'm working in something that should be in Photoshop, but I'm trying to do an Illustrator. And you'll see your computer start to get boggled down. Um, okay, and then hit Create. I do not name mine at this point, and I will show you why. Okay, so we have this giant file. Let me go over a few things, and then we will save this. 
So this top area is always called menu. Right now I'm in Adobe Illustrator, so my menu items are File, Edit, Object Type, Select, Effect, View, Window, which should always help if you've lost something. I do it all the time. Now if you are in any other program, I'm going to click, I'll move my screen just a little bit, and I will click on the desktop. You can hover and always move your screen. But notice how this is going to change. Now I'm on my desktop. So keep that in mind. Um, F3 can always bring back your screen. If you don't notice this, especially people that are used to being on PCs versus a Mac computer, a PC makes it a little more obvious that you're in a different program. A Mac is like sometimes only these like 12 letters change and you're in a whole other program, but the screen looks identical. So F3 on your keyboard is always a good change for that. Okay. Menu changes between programs. Control panel changes amongst tools. Tool panel, pretty standard. Lots of tools. Anything that's got a white mark has extra things located underneath it. Sometimes you got to search those out. You can always hover over anything. It'll give you little indicators of what's there, what they do. If you're like, I don't know what this is, you can always hover. Um, the center section is your artboard. The white section is your artboard. This is your file tab. Notice ours is titled untitled dash one at the moment. I can see that I set it up in CMYK. Remember cyan, magenta, yellow, and black versus RGB, but I'm always understanding I can swap back and forth and what, what that indicates. And then one of our biggest sections is this whole giant section that just looks like a ton of random stuff. In reality, this section is referred to, that's a funky way of stacking those up. You can move these also if you kind of hover over the top. This is our window section. So these, you'll hear them sometimes referred to as window panels. Um, but everything on that right side can be found here. So every single thing that we see over here is possibly already open. And if it's not open, you can go find it in window. So everything that gets talked about like a window can be found over here. So if you don't have it, open it up in window. All right, at this point, menu, control panel, tools, artboard, file tab. I can stack file tabs on top of each other and windows. I can also move things very carefully. You kind of got to know what the sort of top margin is and then you can move things, but then it gets a little funky. I probably don't do that often. Notice the little blue, I'm hovering, I'm holding my mouse, click hold, drag, and then release. So the same kind of thing for these guys, like let's move these two into one of these others. Click hold, move. Like see this, it's kind of letting me do it with both, but every once in a while it can be funky there, and then it closed that guy down. Uh, frankly, you could even move all of these over here. You could close some of them. Um, we know we're going to need that guy and that guy, frankly. But like, let's just say transform. We're not going to use that. You can click, hold, drag this guy out and always hit the X. If you're like, this is crazy. I only want these, you know, 10 things open and then I'll open them up over here if I need them. Okay, at this point, let's go say if you've clicked off, notice here, if I click into my canvas, this now says Google Chrome, but this looks exactly the same. Click back into my Illustrator, I'm back into Adobe Illustrator. So file, save as. This is where you really have to know what you're doing and where your files are. We're so used to Creative Clouds, but those, those go away, subscriptions go away. On these public library computers, they also get uh, they're sticky. I call it sticky where the login, even if you log out, you can still be sticky logged in where your login will still pop up. Even if you don't say save, you never want to save on these public libraries or any of your login information. But even if you say don't ever save my login info, it can still happen. So you need to do both. So first we'll go to save to creative cloud. 
Now, Creative Cloud just dumps, dumps everything. I like my stuff in rows. You can figure out what you want. You can also add folders. Um, so we'll add, we'll call this intro, save, cool. And then I will call this, uh, you also give everything your name with dashes as well as some indicator of what the file is. That way, when you submit it, your name's attached. If it gets lost, your name's attached. If you're not quite sure <clears throat> what's inside that file or the preview's not working, you've got a slight indicator of a few words that tell you that. So I'm gonna call it Brenda Harrison Intro Lesson One. I like dashes, this is from my old website coding days. Um, I don't like to leave spaces and stuff often. I'm going to hit save. Now, notice a little cloud. It's saying this is saved on the cloud. I am never going to rely solely on that Adobe cloud to always exist and to never get tampered with with anybody else. So I like to do, and you'll also notice, here's our name, super long, and then this like, all this momo jumbo back here. Dot AIC dot AI is the Adobe Illustrator. The C means this is a cloud file. It's still a file. It's kind of a visual indicator that you're working off the cloud. Um, you just gotta be careful with that. I'm more used to working with local files and then just using my cloud as a backup. So this at 63% means we're looking at it at 63%, so it's not even at full. Watch if I go command zero. Oh yeah, that's the Oh, here we go. That's how zoomed in I need to be to be at 100%. Command zero shows me the full screen, but it's only showing 65% because it was such a large file at like 30 something inches. Um, CMYK, that's our color mode, and we're just in a preview. So that's what all this mumbo jumbo is talking about. And you have to start kind of deciphering that like a sentence. <clears throat> Never ever delete the period the A, the I, or frankly even the C, or if it's only the dot AI, don't delete the extension at the end. Okay, so this isn't that great. Let's go do a save as and do a local save. So you see how that goes. So save on your computer. On these public library lab computers, you can go to student files. So over on that left side is where you're kind of finding stuff, like if you're trying to look for something you know that got downloaded, you could always click there, but student files. Then you want to set up a file with your name. So I will go ahead and put in one for me. I'm even going to put a little dash because that makes me a little happier. Hit create. I'm going to make one for this class, intro to graphics, cool, and you can make one for lessons because you'll also have projects and you want to do a new folder for each project because in a project you'll be like collecting different images that you'll be using and templates and lots of different stuff. So we'll say lessons for this because these are going to be little lessons. And then I will save it. And now notice this is going to change because I started on the cloud. Now I'm going to my like local computer. Save. You leave all this stuff as default. You're almost never going to mess with this. Only time is when you've got some real old file you've got to be able to open up on or um, do some weird trick of saving as an older version. You could do that. We're not going to. Hit OK. And now notice I have no more cloud. I'm working on the computer. My extension is now only called .ai. I don't have a C anymore indicating cloud. Everything else is the same. Still at 65% zoom in. Still at CMYK color mode. Um, so all is good. You should be working off of a little bit of both and saving into both at the end of your day. So I'm going to work in my student folder. Again, this could get... Um, messed up, this could get uh, messed with by other students, so you just kind of have to be careful with things like that. Um, you also can have flash drives that you can get to in here, and like I have a brand new flash drive that I also like to save in sometimes. So student files and drives, flash drives or external hard drives are what I would consider 
local, not cloud-based cloud saving options, and you need to do a little bit of both. <clears throat> okay, menu, control panel, tools, file, artboard, windows. Layers is one of our favorite windows. It looks like two pieces of paper stacked on top of each other. You can always go to window layers if you don't have it open. We have one layer right now. If I zoom out, command minus, I can see all this blank space, and then here's my file. I say that because sometimes when I'm building up campaigns, I'm pulling in stuff all over here before I bring it into my actual artboard. And you can make uh, more artboards. Let me see him on there. Let's go pull up our artboards. Oh, he's way over here, and I'll pull him into frame. Um, I find these pretty important. I need to be near him. There we go. Now I've got artboards. I'm going to need this actions. Go away. Right. I do love links because this is when you're placing or importing things. They come up in this links. And Pathfinder is amazing. We'll get to that eventually. Command zero pops my file into full frame no matter where I'm at. Sometimes you can get yourself in ways where like Say you're so zoomed out, you're like, oh my god, I don't know where my stuff is. Command zero. Pops into place. You can always hit save at any point or command S on your keyboard. Okay, let's go bring in a file. We want our layers kind of open. We're going to put a template into this, rename this layer, lock it, and then create a new layer to start making art. So file, place. You should have downloaded um the images for the background mine are stored in the sky so give me just one moment your basic illustrator one png and hit place i don't do mine as template you can click this but then it forces it down as like a 50 percent transparency i just bring it in normal and lock the layer place now, see how it's like loaded in my mouse? I'm not clicking anything. I don't like to click, hold, drag. Then I think it forces a size and it doesn't give you a native size. I like to see the native size. It gives me a good visual indicator if it's too small or too big. So I just like to click, release. And he's huge, so command minus. Oh. Let's double check this file size. Oh, because I did them at 8.5 by 11. All right, so if you ever need to change your file size, when I was first setting this up, he should have been the um, 33 inches by 39. So to change a file size in Illustrator, you have to go to a tool called your artboard. Sort of like a crop tool that maybe we're used to in other programs. If you click on that tool, and release, you will notice up in your control panel how it shows me the file size and width and height. Just change those here to 33 by 39. Hit return, and there it is. Now, I want to move this into place here. Perfect. So once you get that point, we're going to lock this layer. So in your layers window, next to a little eyeball, the eyeball says, can I see it or not? Nope, yep. Click in that little square next to it to toggle on the lock. Now I can't mess with it. That's what this little visual indicator is saying. No matter what I do, I cannot mess with it. And this is what we're gonna to start to work on. So I just command, mine, uh, command zero so you can see it all. We're going to work our way through these 15 steps. And then you'll move yours over here so that I can see it. Mine is a template. Command plus, command minus to zoom in and out. And then the hand bar are going to be your best friend. Okay? And let's begin. Let's go double click on this layer one. Let's call it template. Click off of it. Add a new layer to this little plus sign below it automatically pops it up below, double click and say art. 
this, as you develop skills in graphic design, you may end up with a hundred layers at some point. So we're going to have two in here. This one's locked. I can always, again, see what I'm doing in that layer. If I had accidentally like, ah, oh, where's this? I use um, the eyeball a lot. Okay. In our tools panel, we've got two different arrows. You, you're like, what is this? these different arrows. So we've got our main selection arrow. That's where we move things. It's also where we can scale things. Then we've got what's called a direct select arrow. Direct select is so that we can move points and curves. Getting into the detailed aspects of this vector art. Remember this is math based art based on X and Y and math coordinates plugged into the background of this software. Um, he gets very tricky. He's working in singular pixels and you have to be right. I know that that little ship is making it look like it's so easy, but you have to be directly over top of that individual pixel for that to work. This guy, you can screw things up. Just watch for a minute. If I go and draw something, we're going to get into that. If I want to move it or scale it, I need this button. Move it, now don't move it from the sides. If I hover over any of these white boxes, notice that it's gonna start doing some kind of scale. And you don't necessarily want that. Sometimes you just wanna move it. When you're moving it, you have to physically be over the color, like the main piece of the color and then you can move it. Out here, you start to get into, whoop, you can accidentally do those things. Okay, I'm gonna hit delete and let's begin. Oh, actually, let me undo and show you this direct select really quick. So direct select, this square is made of four points. Let's zoom in, we can see them a little bit better. One, two, three, four. Notice that Right here, I am not on that point. Right there, I am. I have one point selected. I have three points unselected. I can hit shift on my keyboard and click to make two points selected. And if you want to move those, you have to be right over top of them again. If you are just barely not, then you start to move the whole thing. So understanding these tiny pixels and how this is different from this, that's different from this, is very important and being patient to get yourself to that point. Because then there's a whole nother ball game where if there's no fill, no color on the inside, um, he, he's not even grabbing anything. So <laughs> understanding single pixels. The only color to grab is the stroke. Um, and I'll go right into that, but a Fill is the inside, a stroke is the outline. So right now it has a black stroke and I have to be physically on the stroke to move it. If I'm just a pixel over, I'm not moving it. And I find that to make some students crazy. So be careful with that. All right, command zero so I can see everything. Command plus to zoom in, uh, keyboard and click and drag to get back up to one. So let's make one and then move it over to ours. We're gonna come down here, we're just gonna use a line tool. This one's one of the easiest ways to do it. Click on this line tool, click hold, drag. Now, I'm still holding, I have not released my mouse. If I hit shift, it pulls it into direct 45 degree increments, which I really like. So like here's a perfect straight line. Now, if yours looks like this, which often they can, it has no fill, it has no stroke. Control panel, fill stroke. Fill, color on the inside, stroke, outline. <clears throat> you must give it an outline to see it. So now it has a black outline. You can also adjust the thickness. Let's make ours five so we can see it. Okay, now let's do the tricky part of moving it. When I wanna move it, I want my arrow, my main arrow, I want to come and grab right in the middle. I don't want to get next to where I know there's points because sometimes then I can start to oh, make it bigger, even tilted. 
So get right over just the main part of the line and move it over into, and then I'm space barring yours. Yours. Space bar back. Let's do it with another tool for number two. Pause this video until that line is perfect and brought over to your section. Pause. Okay, now we're going to use the line tool, uh, pen tool to make a line. Click, release. I can also hit shift again. Click, release. He's going to then stay sticky. You can hit um, escape, upper left key of your keyboard to make that stop. <clears throat> go back to your arrow. You're going to do a lot of that. You're going to go back to your arrow every other step of the way. Now I've got this. I'm not going to grab it there. I'm not going to grab it there. I'm going to grab it right over the middle and use my left. I'm a righty, so I'm using mouse with my right hand. Use my left hand to get the hand tool on the keyboard and bring this over here and back. Pause until you finish that spot. Now we're going to go on to number three. We're going to skip type. We're going to get into that in a lesson a little bit later down. So this is shapes, lots of shapes. We're going to start with a rectangle. To draw a perfect square, hit shift. You're using both hands and your eyes are going forward. This is a lot of coordination. So don't be afraid to be like, oh my gosh, I did not keep up with that. Pause, do it again. So I get myself over, I hit shift, I drag. I'm still at my five points. You, you, you could change this. We're gonna obviously change it down there. You could change it down to two. Same thing goes, don't go grab it here. Why isn't that working? Well, because there's no fill. There's no fill. And you're not hovering right over the stroke. Okay, I'm hovering right over the stroke. Oh, well, now you're grabbing one of the shape shifter boxes. So don't do that. Right over just a plain old line. <laughs> not here, but here. Drag it over. Space bar. Cool. Back. We're going to do four of these so we can start this guy like here and we'll just ding, 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 add them up. Rectangle. I don't need to hit shift this time. I'm just going to click, hold, drag. He still doesn't have a fill, so I still can't grab him in the middle. Think of it like a donut. There's nothing in here. I have to be right. Careful with that little indicator. He'll do weird stuff. Right over it. Space bar, move it. I've got some of my um, like smart guides on. That's what you're seeing, saying like, oh, you want to be like totally lined up? Okay, we can do that. Uh, space bar, click with your space bar, click with your mouse, hold drag until you get back to your spot. Okay, now let's go grab our rounded rectangle. Now, rounded rectangle doesn't start here, you would think, because then he's too little. He's more where you want him is like, like the start of that, corners. Click, hold, drag. If you want him to be a super perfect little square, hold shift, which we do, and release. Let's change him to pink or green, whatever. And let's beef him up to six so we can see. We go back to our main selection. We don't click here, we click right here. Move them over, space bar, over. This feels like a lot of back and forth. I am forcing your coordination in this program big time until we get that finalized. So your next thing is a circle. So we'll go back into here, click hold, drag, down to circle. We can get a perfect circle, kind of similar. You don't start on where you want, like a part of the circle. You have to start kind of on an indicator like it's a square. Hold shift to make a perfect circle. Click hold drag. If you did not hit shift, don't just try to eyeball it. I can always see the tiniest differences. Hit shift. Get it perfect. You can always delete it, redo it. You can always do um, a command Z on your computer to undo it. 
Don't click here, click here, move this over. Cool. Okay, we got some stuff done. Let's go back. Now let's do this guy and work on fill and stroke. Back to our square. Make a perfect square. Hold shift, click, hold, drag. I don't want that green. I want to have red. And I want to have no. So now he looks like the template. And I can bring him over. And he's in his line. Cool. <clears throat> Same thing with this one. Except this time, hold shift, we're going to add a stroke. And let's beef it up to like 10. Now, because we have a fill, we can click in here. There's color there, so the computer knows what it's grabbing. Awesome. Look at all the things we've already created. Let's go make this diamond shape. All it is is a square turned slightly sideways. So we'll do diamond. We'll start with a square. We'll get a close of what we think the size is. Then we're going to go back to our main arrow, hover over a corner till we get this little indicator. Look, no, 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 yes. Then we're going to hit shift with our left hand. Click, hold. We got a lot going on. We're looking at a screen. We got our left hand holding shift, our right hand holding a mouse. And turn until it clicks perfectly into place. Now let's make it look like mine. Let's take this to black, down, and let's drop to a non-fill. Click on just the line, not a corner, not any other inside, and drag him over. Good. Let's do a star. Um, your star settings can be all different. So sometimes you just got to draw a star first. Oh, and he is kind of normal. Hit shift to get him straight. Get close to size. Click. Check it. Yep. And drag it over. Go back. This dragging over and zooming in and out is really important to learn. All right, now we're going to do a star with some settings. So back to our star. This time we're just going to click and release. And we get this little box, kind of like that. This is where you have to guess and check. So to get a little diamond, I want four or a little like sparkle. I'll use this shape sometimes when I'm trying to make something look sparkly in a design. Um, and then this is your outer radius and this is your or radius one and radius two. So if I know I want radius two like much more in, you just got to bring it down a lot like, and guess. I'm going to say two. Hit OK. Oh, he's pretty close. Something to that effect. I can't click here. I don't want to click here because that does weird stuff. Make sure you're clicking right on the line and bringing it over. Keyboard, uh, spacebar, move it. Spacebar, back. Oh, we're almost done. A couple more. Okay. At this point, throughout everything, you need to be hitting save. So file save. Remember, I'm saving locally on this computer's and saving it inside the student folder. Everything on a desktop is, or in a download folder is game to be deleted. So never work off of those. Make sure you're saving it in that student folder. It's also named for you um, and organized for your classes and projects. Okay. Now we're going to go on to the pen tool. There's a lot we can do with this pen tool. So we're going to do some bare bones basics right now. Grab the pen tool. We're just going to click release, click release, click, click release. So click, release, click, release. I can hold shift if I know it's going to be this like perfect. These are like little 90 degrees. I'm holding shift with my left hand. And then you're like, ah, how do I finish it? Just hit escape on the keyboard. And now I've got a little zigzag. Don't click here. 
Don't click here and try to move it. You'll get all kinds of weird stuff. Make sure you're clicking on the line, space bar, and moving it over. Come back. Oh, and we're going to practice copy and paste. So now we're going to grab this guy. Ooh, which I drug him way too far to the edge. Let's copy and paste. Command C to copy. Command V to paste. There's a second version. Let's bring him back over to my template. Space bar, move, drag. We want to move these two points up. And how do I do that? Oh, do I do that? Nope, then it moves all of them up. Use your direct select tool. Remember this guy is here to move individual points. This is definitely the more advanced of the two selections. It's what makes us really graphic designers of custom art. Um, the options are endless. So click on the white arrow. Click. Right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine points. I have one selected. I can select two by hitting shift. So now I'm going to go shift, hold, click. Now I have two points selected rather than just one. I use the arrows on my keyboard a lot. So now I like let go of my mouse. I'm using my right hand and I just click up. If you hit shift, you can make like bigger jumps. I think it's like five or 10. And there you go. Now don't start moving it now. So then you'll move just those points. Go back to your main selection. Click on it to like reset just that basic click space bar, click over. Perfect. Okay, now we've got one, two more things. Save, save, whoops. Save. Okay, now we're gonna click gold drag with this pen and it gets pretty tricky. So I'm gonna show you and then we're gonna make it happen. Click. The, these are handlebars. This is a point. A point. So this one has one, two, three, four, five points. And each point has a handlebar on both sides. And the length of the handlebar and the tilt of the handlebar indicate what is going to happen with that curve. So there's a lot going on in a little wave like this. So you might have to do this a couple of times until it feels more intuitive. Click, hold, drag. Click, hold, drag. Sometimes I hit shift if I know I'm doing, like, to make it perfect. Click, hold, drag. You can see that guy going. Click, hold, drag. Click, hold. Eyeball it until I get it there. Get let go of it. You can either click on an arrow or you can hit escape. Now, if at any point yours is not exactly like that, and you're like, oh my gosh, I gotta fix it. Let me show you. Click, hold, drag. Whoop, I already started off wrong. Click, hold, drag. Hmm. Click, hold, drag. Oh, I messed one of them up. Click, hold, drag. We'll do that one. There we go. Ooh, he fell over his head. You can go back to your direct select, and this, this is what the tiny little pixels make students crazy sometimes. You can move these points. See him? Now, this is different than this. You can see how close I was. So moving a point is different than moving an anchor handlebar. So like right here, I'm not moving nothing. And then you're like, oh my god, disappear. That's so stressful. Just click on it again. See the handle, do what you gotta do. Click. This will not happen as fast for you as it necessarily does for me. Points, handles, and you gotta be like right on them. And then if you get off of them, just click again so it shows you them. And then you can adjust, but you gotta be, this does not work, this worked. And this is different than this. So just take your time. All right, whichever one of these, if you just obviously did just one, bring it over. Command minus if you want to see everything. All right, file save. Let's make our last little thing with this smiley face. Here he is. He's so cute. 
He's just a bunch of circles and then one little swooshy moment. Go back, find your lips. Let's make a perfect one. Let's fill it with yellow. Oh, I can't see anything. No big deal. You can either move them to the side. Um, yeah, that's probably the best way. I mean, you can always hide the fill for a little bit so you can see through it. Okay, I'll go back in. Let's make some eyes. Eyes. Let's take the stroke off. Let's color them black. Let's have the same shaped eyes by doing Command C, Command V. Don't pull here, don't pull here. Get right there and move it over into place. Great. Let's do a smaller nose. Hold shift to get a perfect little circle. It's black. Now let's use our pen tool. Try to get this little smile. Click, release, click, release, click, release. And finish with escape or hit your arrow. Now, it looks filled. It is filled and there's no line. Swap these. Boom. You're like, oh my gosh, why isn't the control panel if I want to like beef up the line? I, I like to go grab my main select and then watch this control panel is going to change right when I click on it. Click. And now he's a little different. So then you can go in and like beef it up or whatever. Now, here's another fun thing we haven't done yet. Because everything is locked down there and I only have this, this, this and this. This thing thing makes me nuts. I can click, hold, drag to get all three of those. I could also click, hold, shift, click, click, click. Do you have a float your boat? Drag them over. I can hit shift if I want them to stay right there too. Now let's zoom out. Let's grab this entire guy and let's move him over. And at that point, you should have your 15 different things. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Let's go make sure we're saving everywhere. File save is in my student folder. File, hold on, onto my store and go. Save, that's my flash drive. And then I can be extra. Oh, you gotta let it finish. There, it finished. Save as Creative Cloud intro folder that I started. And that's what I want it to be. And hit save. That's fine. That's my background template. Back out, Command Zero to see everything. Double check in our layers. We've got art. That's our stuff. Oh, and I left that one line over there. That's okay. And then there's my template. At this point, file save. You've got the cloud version. Yes, 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 I know. This .ai or .aic is what you're going to submit for this lesson and actually give me that layered file. Don't go saving it as like a PDF or a PNG or a JPEG or anything. I want to have your layered dot AI file of some degree. Let me know if you have any questions.